welcome to basic back bends. So I'm gonna go over five basic back bends and how to complement each one. So after you do a back bend, you'll find a neutral position to help maintain that anatomical alignment in the spine. So let's begin. We'll first start off in cat cow just to warm up the spine and get comfortable with moving and massaging the entire vertebrae. So find your tabletop, wrists are under, or underneath the shoulders, spread your fingers really wide and press into each and every fingertip and into the palm. So the entire palm is pressing down. Spreading fingers wide. And whether your toes are flat or they're flipped under, put a little bit of pressure, a little weight into your feet. So it takes a little bit off of the knees. And while you're pressing into the fingertips, you're taking weight off of the wrist. So finding a neutral spine here. On an inhale, drop the belly down, arch the spine, look up. This right here is even a back bend in your first cow. And then exhale, lift the ribs up, tuck the chin into the chest, the tailbone comes down. And then continue through this motion, just moving with the breath, massaging the entire spine, just waking it up. This is one of the best ways to move your body every single day. If you're not able to get on your hands and knees, you can find a seated position and place your hands on your knees or even on your thighs and roll through the spine just like this. So one more, inhale and exhale. And lowering right down onto the belly. So lying down onto the belly, spread your legs about hip bone distance wide, press your feet in. So when you're doing back bends lying down on your belly, you want to engage the lower body. So you're pressing your thighs down, pressing your feet down, squeezing the buttocks in, lift from the belly. Shoulders are gonna be back, hands are underneath the, sh the shoulders. So you're pressing into your hands for cobra. Elbows are back. So with the entire lower body engaged, the belly pulling in, just lift up. Inhale here and exhale. You want to make sure that the shoulders aren't shrugging up. If they are, then come a little lower and then lower down. Also, make sure there's not any compression in the low spine. If there is, then come down lower. And a way to, a way to defeat that is by engaging the lower body even more, pulling the belly in and lift up. The shoulders stay back and down. Elbows stay squeezing in. There's no compression in the low spine, low spine. There's no pain. It feels good. The heart is opening, the heart is lifting. Then look forward or maybe even up, opening the throat. Strong legs and lower all the way down. Bring both hands in front of the forehead and then rest the forehead down. So this is your neutral space. Instead of going into a, a forward fold, it's nice to find a neutral space or even a gentle twist, which we'll do in a, in a minute. So that's your gentle space. Next one is Sphinx Pose. So the elbows this time are underneath the shoulders. The hands are flat. You're pressing down into your forearms, down into your hands. The legs are the exact same. So engaging the legs, engaging the buttocks, pull the belly in and the heart is lifted. The gaze is forward. The neck is relaxed. You can even Turn it a little bit side to side. The heart is lifted. And again, no compression in the spine. So really pull the belly in, lift it up. And then you would lower all the way back down, finding your neutral spine again. This is a nice resting spot to return back to anatomical alignment. Then we'll move into locust pose. So this is one of the, the most basic, but it's a little bit more difficult. So reach your arms back and your legs will lift. So you can stay here, palms are facing up as you lie down, and you'll lift, pull the belly in, strong buttocks, and inhale, lift up the shoulders, stay back. Everything is working. So really strong, make sure that there's no pain in the low back. Lift, lift, lift. If you wanna play around lifting your legs higher or your chest higher, you can do that as well. Palms either face up or towards each other. And then lower all the way down, coming back 
Do your belly shavasana. And take a few breaths there. And then we'll rise up into the hands and knees. And then come forward to sit in hero's pose. So we're gonna move into camel pose, ustrasana. You probably see this one a lot. So if you have blocks, it's really nice to put them in between your feet. If you don't, you can tuck the toes under. So you're, you're engaged in the back of the body again here. So strong buttocks, strong hamstrings, strong quadriceps. So the entire low body is stabilizing you. Pull the belly in, lift the chest, and bring the hands to the low back. So you're just reaching the chest up and then maybe grabbing a hold with one hand and then grabbing a hold with the next. Again, no pain in the spine. So pull the belly in, try to lift up and then you can look up or even back behind you if that's available. And then coming back out of it, you can walk your hands back up the back of the body and then sit down in hero's pose and take a gentle twist to one side, a gentle twist to the other. And then come back up, we're gonna do another variation. So again, if you were to have the block, you should place them there. If you wanna take it a little deeper, you felt pretty strong, your back has a little bit more flexibility in it today, then you can bring your hands to your low back again. Pull the belly in, squeeze the buttocks, let your feet be flat, and then maybe drop one hand, and then maybe the other. So everything is working. There is no pain. You can grab onto the heels, the ankles. And then again, as you rise up, walk the hands back up and then sit down in hero's pose and take a gentle twist. One way, a gentle twist another way. And then coming onto the back for bridge pose. If you still have your block, you can place it to the side and you can even slide it under your bum during this part. So alignment is really important here. You want the feet about hip bone distance apart and you want the toes straight forward. So even before you lie all the way down, make sure you see that. And then lower down. And the knees are on top of the ankles. You don't want them to be too far out or too close to the buttocks. You want a little bit of space and the knees stay straight up. Go ahead and tuck the shoulder blades under. Make sure the neck is relaxed so you can drop it side to side. Palms will begin pressing face down to the mat. So really press, push the weight into the shoulders, into the feet. And you'll pull the belly up as you squeeze the buttocks and the legs. So everything is really strong. Again, soft neck, no weight in the neck. And squeeze as you lift up, opening the heart. You can stay here for a few breaths. Make sure that there's nothing in the neck. Keep the gaze straight up. You don't want to move the neck side to side, even if a teacher, while she's telling you, turns her neck to look at you. Don't look back. <laughs> Keep your head straight up. Exhale, lower down one vertebrae at a time. And then you can drop your knees side to side for a gentle twist. A lot of us, as soon as you come out of bridge pose, you'll have a, a tendency or feel a draw to pull the knees in. After you do a lot of heart opening or back bends, you don't want to lose what you've just done. Sometimes by pulling the knees in, you can lose that. Even though it feels really good, that can be considered a counter pose. It's better to do twist instead of a fold. So we're going to do one more bridge pose here. Again, tucking the shoulder blades under. Neck is light, head is straight up. This time you're gonna, as you lift, you'll lift, pressing into the shoulders, into the feet, squeeze the buttocks, and then clasp the hands underneath. Really pressing into the upper arms. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze the back of the legs, strong legs. There is no pain and you don't have to go super high like this. You can come a little lower and then exhale lower all the way down. And again, Gentle twist side to side. Nice compliment to your beautiful heart opening. 
So there you have it. Those are five gentle but basic back bends that you'll see throughout your practice. They're wonderful to practice on their own or with a practice or in the middle of a practice. But I encourage you when you do them, instead of going straight into a forward fold, to do a gentle twist side to side or complement it with a neutral spine instead. Thank you so much for practicing. And I really hope that you enjoy opening your heart and feeling that openness after back bending. Namaste.